What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update. 18th of January now, so the clock is ticking. If we do want to get any more signings in, and the rumor mill is still going on in overdrive, as we've been linked with Ko Itakura yesterday. As Florian Plettenberg says that both Tottenham and Liverpool have interest in Munchen Gladbach defender Ko Itakura, who has a release clause in his contract to the value of 10 to 15 million euros, which does become active in the summer. A move could then be possible and Ange Postacoglu has previously held an interest in the player before when he was Celtic manager. I've been doing a little bit of more uh, looking into Koe Takora. He looks like a really astute signing if we were to get him uh, ball-playing centre-back, very much in the mould of Jan Vertonghen, as Google liked to tell me last night. Um, but... Is is another defender of really of desperation of need when let's say come the summer with if Ashley Phillips is coming back? I wouldn't say he's desperate, but I do think he's definitely a defender who fits what we're trying to do. Um, mm. He's very composed on the ball. I think as well, um, uh, if I remember right, I think he's played left back a few times. Um, I think um, he's left footed as well, so he can fill in in a few positions. Um, I think he's. If you're looking at a defender, like the profile of how we like to um, play out from the back and defenders who are very composed on the ball and can beat an opposition press and play through the lines, I think he can definitely do that. And also look at the price; very much a value signing. You know, um, you said what between 15 million uh, euros. So that that kind of price is is very very attractive for a team like Spurs and getting a good quality defender like Itakura, who's fairly young. Was he 24? Um, and, and he's got Bundesliga experience as well. So I think it's a, I think it makes sense, feels in a couple of positions, but I wouldn't say it's like a desperate need. Now we've got Dragos in, in through the door. I think it's one in January, uh, we don't need, but maybe in the summer, let's say Ben Davis leaves potentially. There's rumors of that happening. If Session's coming out the door as well. Um, if Phillips, if we don't deem him to be 100% ready, depends how his loan deal goes at, at, at Plymouth. Um, then maybe it is one we're looking at and thinking, you know, for that kind of price, if we're in European football and Champions League, um, uh, I think that could be a really smart signing. Yeah, he's actually 26, um, so two years. Uh, but, you know, still a fairly good age, to be honest. And he is actually right-footed, but he has been playing, known to be playing at, at uh, left centre-back as well. So I think he's a jewel that can play, um, you know, a versatile role in the back line where I think he can actually play all across the back line, to be honest. So, um, yeah, look, he would be a really good signing. I I'd like to bring him in. It's just that, do we desperately need him? Do we need to go for other targets before we kind of bring him in? Or do you just bring him in with... Um, to say, like, if he can't break into the team, there should be a high sell-on value there. I think so. I think he's definitely a player who's undervalued. I think if, if he comes in and does a good job for us, uh, and if he is surplus to requirements, you could probably get a higher fee for him. Um, so I think it's one we revisit in the summer, see where we are, because if, if Phillips really is ready to step up, then maybe there is less of a need for him. But I think from the scouting department he definitely does seem like the kind of player mm. who really fit in well at Spurs and moving on let's talk about Brian Hill once again as Estadio Deportivo said that Tottenham wants 7 to 8 million euros to sell Brian Hill this month the player is prioritising establishing himself at Spurs and proving himself to Ange Postacoglu those um, should he leave the club however he wants a long term permanent project and not a temporary solution Seville have already sent a strong proposal proposal to Tottenham for the attack um, in terms of Brian Hill and the money that we did outlay on him, that's a quite a big loss, uh, seven to eight million if we are going to accept a, a deal like that. But it's not really surprising, is it, um, seeing as how he has really failed to impact anything at Tottenham, really? This is a consequence of his career stagnating, never getting a run of games at Spurs, being loaned out a few times, uh, you know, one time at Valencia where it was a bit of a mixed time. And then Sevilla, the second time around, he did do quite well. But again, he's come back to Tottenham, not got much game time uh, in the six months. If I am Brian Hill, obviously, as I know, like footballers do believe in their ability and they do obviously, when you get to that kind of level, you have a high self-belief. So Brian Hill will probably be thinking, like if I'm if I'm looking for where the best place for me is, if I can get into the team, I'm not surprised that he would love to stay at Spurs because because looking at Postecoglou's system and and how attacking it is, it should be really suited to him as a winger who likes to take on his man and create chances for for his teammates. I think he'd probably be really enjoying his time under Ange, but what he won't be enjoying is the game time he's getting. So I think from that point of view, I think for his long term 
uh, career to get his career back on track he probably does need a move but I'm not surprised that he would love to fight for his place and would love to break into the team and, and find a place because from his point of view if he was to get into the team there wouldn't be a better place for him than being at Spurs because it's it, it's a really great project I'm sure Ange has made him kind of feel at home you know how Ange has uh, got with like the um, squad players you've seen how he's got them all on side buying into it and Brian Hill has, you know, given his all and tried his best when he has gotten minutes and he has done OK. But I just think from Spurs' point of view, he hasn't done enough to show that he can be a regular starter. And I think it's Brian Hill's career has been at Spurs for so long now. You know, this is coming up to the end of his third year that a permanent solution would probably suit him for his for his long term career. So I really hope he finds a permanent solution. It would be a massive hit on what we did pay for him, unfortunately. That's just reality of how we've mismanaged the situation. But I think for him, I think it is the best for, best for him for sure. Yeah, to be honest, I think even like him within himself should probably put a move at the forefront of his, um, his, his mind because you're looking at it. In the summer, we brought in Brennan Johnson, so uh, that... Uh, decreased his chance of getting on the right hand side and now even now in um in january we've brought in timo werner on loan uh which has put, put him even further down the pecking order so when he's looking at it objectively surely he should see like where he actually fits in right now and there's not a lot of space for him i know he's getting a few minutes here and there from the bench but the uh quicker the players come back you know Mano solomon is about to make a return to the first team as well so he'll go even further down the pecking order there so you would you would imagine like the more our players come back he, he'll get even less minutes than he's getting now so I mean, he should probably want to move on himself uh, more than try and stay and fight for his spot because he's just get, uh, going down and down in the pecking order. No, I completely agree. And I think he is probably thinking about that. I'm just saying that if it, as, a foot, as a footballer who's in, you know, at the elite level of football, you don't get there by not having that self-belief in yourself. And he's probably, I'm just I think, trying to get into his psyche, and he's probably thinking, if I fight hard enough and I have and I believe that I'm better than these wingers and I do break show that I am and break into the team, there is no better place for him than mm. playing for Spurs at, under Ange Postecoglou because it's a great system and he probably loves the manager. But I agree, yeah. he should really realise the writing's on the wall at this point. He's not getting the opportunities and it's gone on long enough that he's not getting the minutes. It can't yeah. continue. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll have to wait and see. I, do, I actually do think something's going to happen with Brian Hill from now until the end of the window, but it's just a case of if someone's willing to take him on a permanent move because we haven't found that yet. Maybe it's because in the past Spurs have maybe been asking for a bit too much money, but it seems as though Spurs have lowered their fee now and, and are willing to come to some sort of compromise. So let's wait and see what happens with that one from now until the end of the window. Uh, but we do have an official move to talk about, and that is Jaffet Tanganga, as he has a officially joined Millwall on loan until the end of the season. Charlie Eccleshire and Romano both confirm that there is no option or obligation to buy in the deal. And Millwall seem absolutely delighted with this one. They've uh, blasted it all over their social media. It's even their header on, on uh, X. And uh, so it's like, it's probably the biggest signing they've made in, in many, many a year, Millwall. But I think it's a good move for Millwall, good move for Tanganga, and probably a good move for Spurs as well. And maybe if he has a successful time in the second half of the season, could add a bit of value there. And maybe some will take him on a permanent deal. Yeah, I mean, Millwall aren't doing fantastically well at the moment in the championship. I think they're near like the, I think about 16th in the table. They do play a back three system, which in theory should suit Tanganga because he can play probably on that right centre-back role or even the centre-centre-back role, or even maybe wing-back. But I don't think that's his uh, main position. I think he just needs to go somewhere where he's playing. And I know the championship is, you know, you, we had rumours a year ago or two years ago of him going to AC Milan. So for, from his point of view, the fact that he's having to drop down to the championship is a bit of a blow. But at this point in his career, having just spent, gone on loan to a Bundesliga side and not seen a minute, he just needs to play wherever it is. And championship is not a bad level. If he can go there, really prove himself over the next six months, have a really good loan spell and show that he's maybe show he's too good for that division, essentially, and, and really show that he, shouldn't, he, he belongs at a higher level then I think there'll be more offers for him uh, come the summer, hopefully from high level positions. But at the moment, no one's willing to take a risk on him because he hasn't played any football for Spurs. He's been he had injury problems and he's had a chance in the Bundesliga, not seen a, a minute at all. And that is a massive blow when you on it when it comes to 
looking for offers and looking for clubs for interest in you because you haven't been able to show what you can do for a long time now. So that so when it comes to getting clubs interested in you, it's kind of uh, that that's the most difficult thing right now when you haven't played football. So I think I know it's a championship club, but hopefully he can play regularly and it could be a really good move for him. He, I think he's got more than enough potential to show his worth to Mill, but it, I think it's all about staying fit for Jaff because he's been injuries have just held him back uh, for so many years now. Uh, to be honest, even when he was playing for Spurs, you know he wasn't fully fit sometimes when playing. I remember that period when he came in under Conte when we lost to Chelsea. Was it like three times in the space of like two weeks or something? And he was playing those games, but he wasn't hun- he wasn't fit, and you could see it in the game. And he was absolutely getting torn apart at times and. He needs to keep he needs to keep himself fit from now until the end of the season and play consistent minutes for Millwall and I'm and I'm sure he'll fr- he'll show his worth if if that is the case to be honest but we'll have to wait and see I'll be keeping a close eye on Millwall and see Jaffet Tanganga's progress but last but not least we've got a couple of players eyeing their return to the Man City game on Friday week as Matt Law confirms that Tottenham's James Madison is targeting the return of the Man City game in the FA Cup in his own track to return that night and that night could also bring the return of Manor Solomon as well who should be back available so uh, players coming back thick and fast aren't they Sim? Yeah and it's absolutely massive news that Madison should be back in the frame for City I don't look we have to wait and see whether he's fit enough to start or whether he'll be on the bench or, or whatnot but just having him available is a massive boost because he's a massive leader uh, amongst the dressing room we know how good he can be on the pitch there's no secret and he's a massive part of how we play and how we you know, create chances. He adds that little spark of creativity that definitely we're missing. Even the likes of Lo Celso and Kulisevsky, they've been doing a good job um, in, in that role in his absence, but they're nowhere near the level of what Madison was offering in those first 10 games. Set pieces as well. Uh, he was up to uh, uh, um, massive with his delivery. I know Pedro Porro is also doing a good job, but having him available for that game when they're going to be obviously attacking us, they're going to be leaving, leaving space in behind them. We just need someone who has that quality to ping those through balls, those balls over the top to oncoming runners and create those chances. And it's going to be massive to have him back available. And as well, we haven't seen him link up with Ben Tenkor yet um, as well in the midfield. And that's really a mouth-watering prospect. When it comes to Solomon, it's an interesting one for him because he's kind of the forgot, forgotten man, isn't he, Man or Solomon? No one's really talking about him. He's been out for like three months. Obviously, he did have a decent start to his first career at the beginning. Had some decent performances. Got a, um, a couple of assists against Burnley in a 5-2 win. Had a decent game against Sheffield United. Then did big, kind of pick up an injury from nowhere and no one's really mentioned him, the fact that we've he's been missing. But I'm not, I'm not expecting him to come in and you know earn his starting spot straight away or anything like that. But what he does give us is options off the bench. And that's something we've been badly missing. You saw against Man United, we were looking to change the game or add a bit of extra impetus. And we just had nothing. We didn't have anyone to come on and uh, give us a little bit of extra energy. And that's what he's going to bring us, hopefully. Again, get a running against tired legs as well when um, defenders are... You know, at the near the end of games, they've had like Werner running at them for for a long time, and then hopefully you got Manuel Solomon will be ready to come on for those last twenty minutes and really take advantage of that. So, just having extra option there is really going to help us uh, with the squad depth and allow other players to take a break, and maybe he'll um, play well enough to earn a start as well. So that's also really really positive news. Yeah, I mean that's the point that I'm really excited about is what you're talking about with options because. Like you said, you know, the game against Manchester United, look at the bench and there was just nothing there. We had to bring on Brian Hill as the first substitute to really force the issue. Now you're looking at it, Kulisevsky's back. Um, Mano Solomon should be back. Madison should be back. You know, you're, you're starting to see a near close to full bench now of proper players and proper first team players so it's going to be give us such a lift not only for that Man City game but going into the um, second half of the Premier League campaign as well so I'm so excited for this second half of the season I'm so excited to see all these players come back and I'm hoping that Spurs can just go from strength to strength now this season and I'm kind of expecting it as well. Yeah I don't see any reason why not I mean considering that how well we've played with all these players out, we've still been able to maintain a certain level of performance. You know, give, now we're going to have options <coughs> off the bench. Now we're going to have our main players back fit as well. And then add into that when the players come back from Africa and Asia Cup um, back in mid-February as well, that'll be a second lot of boosts that we hope to get. So come the end of February, that will be like a real fully fit squad we can choose from and, and, and be super excited. But even in the short term, between now and and, um, and mid-February, to have Madison Kulisevsky back and Solomon as well, 
all of a sudden that that front line looks a lot healthier and we won't be have to be relying on certain players all the time to start every minute of every game and and really exert themselves more than they should and that's going to be a really really positive thing yeah, because fatigue was very much setting in within this squad. They're kind of coming in at the exact most important time that we need them because you cast your mind back, I know it was a while ago now, but look at that Brighton game and how much on our legs we looked at times. And even in the second half against Manchester United, we just looked shattered. So um, it's such a welcome return to all these players. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if they are actually in the squad and obviously we'll keep you up to date every time we get a bit of news. But that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding all the news stories we've brought to you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. Come on you Spurs.